Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. Well, allow me to make two updates today. The first thing is we're gonna make an update about our parakeets. And the second is we're gonna harvest our catfish. Well, we have this small pond right there. This contains just a few of this catfish which I decided to harvest because I wanted to utilize the pond with uh, a solar plantation. I'm really very eager to propagate this azola because as what I have told you, uh, this will help us in our backup feeding to our animals here in the farm. And today, let us uh, go inside in this very noisy aviary. You can hear the chirpings of the bird and I am so glad that maybe 90% of the boxes are already filled with eggs. So it gives us the idea that this location is really good for our parakeets. Well, let me tell you something about the location because these parakeets don't like noisy place. A place where there are sudden sounds, there are bangings of the door, barkings of the dogs, or maybe other noise like the vehicle passing by, and there are people shouting in a crowded area. Well, this is not a good place for the parakeets, but this place is good because it's very tranquil and you cannot hear any noise except for the noise of the parakeets themselves. In our previous video, we had a discussion about what to do with the very small chick and uh, some of you suggested that it has to be transferred to another nest where there are same sizes of these chicks and another suggestion was that we're gonna get these uh, big ones and then we will give way to the small ones and then we will hand feed the, the bigger ones. Well, that's also very possible. And number three is that we will just allow the parents to take care and we will see if uh, the chicks will survive. So these are the three things that we have discussed in our previous videos and I would like to make a decision as we get there. I am also entertaining the idea of hand feeding but then I have no experience about hand feeding. Maybe this will be a good try for me, hand feeding the chicks of the sparrows. So that's also very possible. So we will get inside and we will decide. Help me decide because your suggestions really help me a lot and inspire me to do more of, you know, about this uh, bird farming. So come on, let's go in and we will verify if the chick that we have discovered, this very small chick together with the bigger siblings, is still alive. As of the moment, I don't have really no idea what happened but uh, we will decide as we get there. Come on, let's go in. And after this one, we will harvest our catfish. So guys, we have here five, actually five chicks, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, the three of them are having almost the same size, but the two others are very small, especially this one, very small. And your suggestion was to, you know, transfer this one to another case where there are actually smaller chicks. I believe that we can just leave them as it is because the parents can actually take care of these five chicks, I believe. What we will do is we will just provide them with unlimited food. We're giving them with this asola and different types of, of feeding. 
and I believe that this will survive. But we will see if there are other nest boxes that are having lesser chicks and with the same size, then maybe we can transfer this one. So we will examine if we can do these things and I hope that we can maximize our production. As what I have told you, we will learn this together and I think the idea of transferring the chicks would be good. But I don't know if this practice would be acceptable by the parents. Maybe they will not nurse it, they will just kill it because of the smell, having different smell. But we will try this one because I wanted to settle this, uh, you know, this uh, problem because this problem really is very common that the last uh, egg that had been laid will be hatched also very late and uh, the moment that this last egg will be hatched the size of the other birdlings are already big they cannot anymore compete with the other siblings this will somehow result to the malnourishment or even death of the, the small one So guys, as what I have said, we have three choices. The first choice is we will allow the other couple to foster some chicks if they have lesser chicks. We will mix the chick of the other pair to the couple which has uh, lesser chicks. But this uh, idea is not good actually because I made this uh, as the basis, this particular nest. This particular nest has actually six birdlings they are in different sizes. They are big, they are small, and there are even medium sizes. So it gives me the impression that they can take care of uh, their babies, no matter how many it is. So since there are six that are here and they're so well, so we can conclude that we will not anymore disturb them. All the birds have the capacity to take care of their own babies without interference from humans and uh, this gives me now a concrete uh, solution to the problem and the solution is that we will just allow them to take care of themselves we will just allow the parents to take care of their own babies i will no longer be getting some of the chicks to be placed in the other boxes because it might also cause some damage because i believe that these birds has the capacity of identifying their own babies so this is it i will no longer disturb them i will allow them to take care of their babies i will not hunt with this but uh, leave them as it is So we have finally drained all the water. We used the submersible pump. Uh, it's good that this pump is very powerful that it can drain volumes of water in just a matter of one to two hours. We're going to make some adjustments. We will also try to drop the Asola right here so that it will massively propagate. And I don't know if this is feasible. We will not know if we will not try. But this tank, of course, should be used for the koi and the goldfish and even the catfish. So these are the things that we envision to do. We are also doing good in breeding of this uh, catfish and we did it very well. We are about to release another batch of catfish right here. In the previous days, we have also released some 10,000 catfish on the third pond and that's gonna be harvested two or three months from now. So the main focus of this business would be the production of catfish, koi and goldfish, production of the asola for the feeding of our chickens, goats, ducks and quails. Of course, the ostrich, the lovebirds are also eating this one. My ambition in the future is to, you know, provide our pets with sustainable food with uh, minimal expenses. So we will go now to the concrete tank where we will put this uh, catfish for conditioning. Come on, let's go.
So you will see that we have here massive of this catfish already and they're now big. And when we started this catfish farming, we started from zero knowledge about how to breed and how to make them grow. But because of our perseverance and research, non-stop research about how to breed this one, we were able to establish a good breeding system. We also have established, as what I've said, the water management and the fry care. And I have revealed all these techniques in our previous videos. You can browse on it. You can also learn lessons out of the actual experience that we had. And we made mention that the breeding system that we have adopted is already the natural breeding. And they're not that difficult to breed. They're actually easy to breed if we can just get the correct timing and uh, correct water management. What I have in mind is to expand this concrete tank over there and then maybe we will utilize other vacant lots right here for our concrete tanks for the catfish. And that's going to be a sustainable uh, resources for food and uh, that would be also uh, contributing to the food security of our people here in our locality in our Zamboanga city and I hope that we can also encourage other people to do the same in order for us to augment our income and help contribute the security for our food. We are threatened always by the swine flu and other diseases for the birds, the chickens and this will cause the sudden rising of the prices in the market of the meat of the chickens and other commodities. That's why we have to think of ways on how to make our uh, food system sustainable and stable and this is one. And this is my advocacy to help other people to do the same and let us progress together. Let us uh, be successful together and uh, if you are not subscribed to this channel, I will invite you to please subscribe and share this video to your friend or to your relatives and loved ones who may be needing this kind of uh, content because these contents are really for livelihood and the contents of this also will inspire us to do something better for this world to live on and uh, this is my encouragement I woke up in the middle of the night Ooh. And I wondered how you're always right So from the farm to the house, we are trying our best to become productive. Actually, here in the house, we concentrate on the breeding of this uh, Japanese koi, this uh, betta fish, this goldfish, gapi, mollies. And I told you that we are going to beautify this area. And we have started already using the bamboo. You know, this bamboo, when be painted, maybe the natural varnish will do a lot for the beautification of this bamboo and that's my plan to paint them with varnish very natural and it looks elegant I suppose I am also planning to put some waterfalls right here and just this morning we were able to segregate the good quality of this Japanese koi we segregated them because we wanted to have a collection of beautiful patterns of Japanese koi. This will be our main attraction for the farm. I'm looking forward also to make a waterfalls, very big waterfalls, like a swimming pool of this Japanese koi. And we will make a waterfalls. Maybe this will be the attraction of the farm. And my further plans is to allow people to go to the farm of course we will collect some minimal fees for the maintenance for the food and expenses of the labor that we are going to incur and maybe that's viable that's a doable thing that i am planning to accomplish and uh, i know that with your support we can accomplish these things and let me tell you also that we made some adjustments in our filtration system right here because i use the water lettuce as our media and I just realized that the roots of 
this uh, water lettuce cannot support the filtration system because they will become rotten when they are exposed so much to the ammonia produced by the fish. I decided to remove the water lettuce. So it's my conclusion now so that you will not uh, do the same mistake to refrain from using this water lettuce as our media because they will contaminate the water. Its root system cannot support the filtration of the water. So I have two conclusions to give. The first one is live plants are really best for our filter media. And uh, number two is refrain from using the water lettuce. So these are the things that we can share with you. I hope that this channel would continue to become an inspiration to other people, to the happiest out there in the world. I'm so glad that we have now so many subscribers all over the world. And it's a milestone for our channel because we started really from scratch. And slowly we are improving a lot in terms of our facility, in terms of the technology that we have adapted, and also in terms of the quality of the video and content that we're gonna upload in YouTube. I would like to invite you to please subscribe because this channel would now serve as your inspiration and guidance in all the farming activities that, not necessarily all, but some of the farming activities that you may want to engage into. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you will continue to support this channel and hit that notification bell and please subscribe and share our videos only here at Dexter's World!